Hi guys, welcome back to the Beautiful Truth. So for today's video, I am coming to you with a quick and easy hair and makeup tutorial that will get you that extra 10 minutes in bed. So I recently started using the Image Skincare Illuma Brightening Serum. I apply this before I put on my moisturizer. As you can see, I just put a little bit of a droplet onto my hands and I've really noticed a difference in my skin. It's great for improving the overall appearance of your skin, the brightness and the pigmentation. I still have serious love for the Cream Face by the Pink Cow brand. This is just a holy grail moisturizer for me. This has done wonders for my skin and brightening it and evening it out, as well as helping with wrinkles. Okay, so this eye cream from Image Skincare is said to really significantly reduce signs of dark circles. I haven't been using it long enough to really say whether it works or not, but definitely really leave your under eye area super, super hydrated. Okay, so here's the one you've all been waiting for. This is me using the MAC Prolong Wear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation for the very first time. I freaking love this foundation. This foundation is so beyond brilliant. It's a medium to full coverage foundation, but I would say it is more on the full side. It is more of a satin finish than a matte finish, but there is kind of a hint of dewiness to it. Normally I avoid dewiness as it means it would wear off my skin, but this just stays on like glue. I would tend to avoid it if you're very dry because any bits that were dry around my mouth, it kind of clung to a little bit, although they do say the nourishing bit is good for dry skin. I'm not 100% sure on that. I will have a full review up on this soon, but as you can see here, it is just such a beautiful, beautiful foundation. Okay, so for whatever reason, my eyelids have just decided to go like super, super oily. So I'm having to use an actual eyelid primer before I put it on my eyeshadow if I wanted to stay put in any way, shape or form. Like most days, I'm going in with a little bit of Makeup Geek Peach Smoothie as a transition color. No kind of shape or rhythm to this. I'm just lashing a bit on just in the crease and above the crease. I then go in here with MAC Blanc Type. It's just to kind of give the lid a little bit of a base so that when I put other colors on, it kind of gives it a little bit more of a pop. Here I am putting MAC uninterrupted all over the lid. Again, I am not being any way kind of neat with this. I'm just putting the color on. This is a quick go-to look. Who has time to be putting loads and loads of effort into your eye makeup every day? So once I have interrupted on, I blend it out with a clean fluffy brush and I just kind of soften around the edges. So using the blank canvas E10 brush, I am applying a little bit of Makeup Geek Cocoa Bear. I adore this eyeshadow. It's really good for kind of deepening out the crease. I'm not putting any massive amount of detail in this. I'm just putting a little bit just slightly above the crease and I am blending it out. It just gives the eye a little bit of depth. This is not a like perfect eye makeup look. That's not the look I'm going for. All I'm looking to do here is just to get a little bit of makeup on my eyes and get out the door in the mornings. I am not going to go in with a perfect, perfect eye look. It's just quick, easy, out the door. I mean, I'm all about getting that extra 10 minutes in bed. Okay, so in the mornings, this is an absolute must for me. I cannot live without this. Basically what this does is, it does conceal a little bit, but it brightens up the under my, under my eye area and it makes me look that little bit more awake. I am bouncing it into the skin here using a Sigma angled kabuki brush, but you can use your fingers. I just prefer it's quicker in the morning. I'm all about quickness, as you can tell, just to kind of bounce it in. I will use concealer over this. This is just to give it an initial brightness. My go-to concealer is the Urban Decay Naked Weightless Concealer. I adore this concealer. I think it's just so good for hiding dark circles. It's not ridiculously expensive. I think it's like in the early 20 euro mark, but it's so, so good. Again, I am bouncing this in with the Kabuki brush, but your finger will do here too. I always set my under eye area. I think I set it here with the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder, but any kind of powder will do. Unless you're getting photographed, it doesn't really matter. Again, I'm going in with uninterrupted underneath my eye area with a little bit of a smudgy brush and I will blend this out. You want to kind of balance out the under eye area with the eye, top eye area. I do look like a little bit of a druggie here, but once you've got mascara and liner on, it doesn't look that way. 
To darken it out a little bit more, I have taken Makeup Geek Cocoa Bear and I've put it on like, I think this is a Real Techniques detail brush and I've just put it underneath the eye. Again, this will be blended out just to soften the look a little bit. If you're a liner fan, then you need the Inglot Gel Liner in number 77 and Duraline in your life. Both are just amazing. I have kind of done this a little bit off camera because my liner decided to have a bit of a hissy fit and I was trying my best to look into the mirror. You've seen me do liner a million and one times before, so you're probably not missing out on much here. For my waterline, I'm using the Physicians Formula Shimmer Sticks. These things are brilliant, they don't budge. I didn't notice myself that I kind of went a little bit underneath the eye here, but when you put this onto the waterline, they literally don't budge. Brows again, filled in using the Soap and Glory Archery Pencil. This is a little more cooler tone than the Anastasia Brow is, but it is a pretty good dupe, and as you can see, it goes onto the eyes easily enough. Setting my foundation using the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder and I am now going to contour my skin using an ambient lighting powder kind of bronzer from the palette. I'm using one of the Nima Fluffy Kabuki brushes which is not meant for bronzing or contouring but it's what I'm using because it seems to be doing the trick for me lately. This blusher is just everything. This is MAC Peachy Keen. It is such a gorgeous shimmer tone blusher and when you pair it here with the Becca highlighter in Moonstone together they give your skin such a beautiful beautiful glow. Mascara I am using the MAC Giga Black Lash Mascara. I love this it's really good for length and definition you won't get loads of volume from it but for length and definition it is fantastic and it is superbly good for your bottom lashes. So finally onto lips and here I am going to line my lips using MAC Sore Lip Liner. This is a new one into my collection and holy moly, it is amazing. I wear it so much. I wear it underneath everything, like everything. I finally got my hands on MAC Faux Lipstick. I love this. This is somewhere between Brave and Twig and it is just so gorgeous and long lip wearing too. Right, so onto my hair because my hair is a bit of a mess. As you can see here, this is just before I got my Gold Fever hair extension, so my hair is a bit shorter. I am using the Colabs um, Dry Shampoo. I do really like this, but for whatever reason, look how wide it has left my hair. I'm like some old lady. Basically what I've done here is I've taken two bits of hair from the very, very top and I'm wrapping one over the other. I wrap twice and on every second wrap, I'm pulling a little bit of hair in from the front. I'm not pulling any hair from the back. I bring it until I get just down to the nape of the neck and then I pin it in. Then I'm onto the same thing on the other side. So again, you're just taking two bits of hair from the top, wrapping one over the other twice, and every second wrap, you take a bit of hair from the front. I wear this hairstyle so often because it actually is so quick, and it really is very, very easy to do. Once I've wrapped the two bits of hair, I gather them up in a ponytail at the back, and I take the pin from the original one out. I'll put the ponytail at whatever position I want on my head, but it's usually kind of just above the bottom part. I will then go and back comb the hair from the ponytail, because this just gives a little bit of volume to the hair. You don't have to do this step, but I just found that I didn't have an awful lot of hair without my extensions, and I wanted a little bit more volume. Once the hair is nice and tight and secure at the back, I begin to roll the hair up into kind of like a bun, except for I'm just tucking it under. Once I have it tucked under, I keep it secure with my hand while I get some of my bobby pins and I just pin it in. I am not pinning the pins anywhere specifically. I'm just trying to create a little bit of a rolled bun look because then what's happening is this kind of plaited thing is coming in either side and it is going into a nice kind of loose messy bun at the back but again the bun is nice and secure with the bobby pins. I can't tell you just how easy this hairstyle is to do. I swear to God, it literally takes me less than two minutes in the morning. This is my hairstyle that I go to when I'm just not in the humor of washing my hair and I just want it nice and back because the plaits kind of hide it and then the bun has your hair tightly out of your way so it's not in your face throughout the day. 
there you have it, a quick and easy go-to look that will give you that extra 10 minutes in bed.